What is up guys, it's Zanara. Today I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know about cooking and alchemy and how both farming and gathering coexist. I'd like to first mention that with cooking and alchemy, just like processing, I invest zero silver into it except for the blackstone powder and vendor materials. Let's go over how to get one second cooking and alchemy time. You need the canape outfit off the cash shop, plus three cook's clothes, Tef sandwich, sharp life stone, and advanced cooking utensils to get one second cooking time. To get one second alchemy time is much harder, and unless you have plus five alchemist clothes, you'll need to wait until your region gets the elixirs with minus one second cooking, cooking and alchemy time. When you do get these elixirs, it will only require plus four alchemist clothes, Tef sandwich, sharp life stone, the new elixir, and advanced alchemy tools. The only tedious parts are getting the sharp life stone and the utensils, both of which are much worth it in the end because of how much time will be saved when doing all of your cooking and alchemy. If you can't afford all of these, even 2 second cooking and alchemy time is efficient enough but any higher is not worth it for most crafts. You might not know exactly what life stones are yet so I'll briefly explain, explain what they are, how to obtain them, how to refuel them, and how to upgrade them. What are life stones? They are alchemy stones, which for this video, the focus of them will be for the decrease in cooking and alchemy time and the gathering a drop rate increase. How do you obtain a life stone? You craft one and upgrade it, or buy it off the marketplace. The recipe to make your own is 9 shining powder, 6 sinner's blood, 10 clear liquid reagent, 10 pure powder reagent, and 7 powder of time. Shining powder is obtained as an RNG byproduct from most, if not all, alchemy crafts. The higher alchemy level the craft requires, the better chance of getting shining powder. Sinner's blood, clear liquid reagent, and pure powder reagent are all crafted. Powder of time is obtained from zinc and lead nodes. The alternative is buying a sharp lifestone off the market, or buying low tier ones, then going through the process of upgrading it. To upgrade a lifestone, you need high quality or special crops. How do you refuel lifestones? I'd recommend refueling them with crafted sinner's blood or clown's blood. Do not get frustrated if you end up dumping a lot into your lifestone. A few weeks worth of use will pay it off in most cases. In the last video, I explained the need for grains. Grains are used in crafting beer which is used to feed your workers and in the process help boost your CP from the byproducts. They are also used in cooking essence of liquor, which I'd only recommend doing if you're a newer player and fast CP gain is your goal, and or you care not for very low profit by turning the essence into honey wine. The crafts for cooking I'd recommend doing are boiled bird eggs, fried fish, meat stew, milk tea, seafood pasta, tea with fine scent, and King of Jungle Hamburg. King of Jungle Hamburg is the, on is the only non-imperial cooking recipe I do aside from beer. Milk tea requires milk, which I only get from the cooking byproducts. Seafood pasta and fried fish are limited by the octopus and fish from nodes. Meat stew is limited by the amount of meat you gather. Boiled eggs are limited by the amount of eggs from nodes. Tea with fine scent is limited by cooking honey, also from nodes. Hamburgs are limited by the lion meat from gathering. Note. For milk tea, only use the blue tea with strong scent. The green tea with fine scent is used for Imperials. The crafts for alchemy I'd recommend doing are demi-human hunt elixirs, mentality elixirs, seal elixirs, human hunt elixirs, elixir of shock, and exp elixirs. The last three being non-imperial alchemy crafts. Demi-human hunt elixirs are limited by the first sap from nodes. Mentality elixirs are limited by the ash sap from nodes. Seal elixirs are limited by the amount of wolf blood you gather. If you need to get rid of birch sap, and gathering wolf blood is too tedious for you. The alternative is making swiftness elixirs which will take minimal gathering of lizard blood. You would then sell them on the market. All of these recipes, if you didn't catch them all on screen, can be found on the BDO codex which I'll provide a link in the description below. You can substitute up to 5 normal ingredient for a high quality variant and up to 8 normal ingredient for a special variant. For cooking and alchemy recipes, when you're done crafting all of your products, you'll want to package them using Imperial Alchemy and Imperial Cuisine Packing. This can be accessed in the Processing tab 
by hitting L like so. These packages are very heavy, so I'd only recommend packaging as needed in each city that has a crafting delivery NPC. To sell the packages, direct yourself to an Imperial Crafting Delivery NPC, which can be find found at either Ovia, Idel, Kalfian, Altanova, Valencia, or Grana. You cannot sell them if you are overweight. The maximum amount you can sell per day is equal to one half of your total contribution points, or CP for short, which resets daily at 8 p.m. EST. Alchemy and cuisine packages share the same limits. Selling Imperial packages is sometimes contested by other players. You can check the availability in every city of each package by navigating to the left hand side of the menu and scrolling until you find your package. If your package says Imperial Delivery Complete, that simply means you have to find another channel, go to a different city's delivery manager, or wait until one of the many Imperial Crafting Delivery resets throughout the day. The Something Lovely website has a timer to track these resets. Each channel has a chance to reset every few hours. Each city shares the same channel reset, but the limits are not shared for each package from city to city. If not, you're good to go and can sell under these specific limitations. For the non-imperial crafts, you either sell them on the marketplace or use them for yourself and save money from having to buy them. Farming is great to get into given you have the CP to support it and can harvest at least 3 times a day. I'd recommend starting out with 10 4 slot farms as they are the most CP efficient. When it comes to what you want to farm, that, that depends on the goal. For me, I farm high quality sunflowers only as needed. I do high quality sunflowers due to the higher yield than, spe than special sunflowers and you only need one high quality sunflower per tea with fine scent craft anyways. I also only farm high quality fortune teller mushrooms, tiger mushrooms, and bluffer mushrooms as needed for two different non-imperial alchemy crafts. Bluffers are specifically used in penetration lectures, which I only use to craft the new droughts or PvP. The seeds I use when I don't need any of the crops or mushrooms previously listed are special tomatoes. I use these for crates and I only use them over special olives because the, the tomatoes also give fruit of the sun which is also used for the penetration elixirs. If you don't plan on crafting them, it is more silver per crate from special olives. Having an alt character to do farms is the most efficient. The location you want to have your farms is at Logia Farm just west of Velia. This location is most ideal because seeds typically grow the fastest from here. You'll want to send green giants from Hydel to your farms. Sending workers means less farming EXP and no hards or sharps, but this also means you won't be constantly swapping to your alt to prune your farms, which slows down grow time significantly. When it comes to breeding and harvesting, you want to breed half and harvest half. Typically, given the rate of 1.6 seeds per breed, you'll need to breed 25 and harvest 15, given you have 10 floor slot farms, and each is only occupying one slot. Organic fertilizer is also nice to pick up when possible, as it decreases grow time significantly. Gathering is the most active part of what I do to make money in the game. When gathering, only do so with magic tools, big pie, a lifestone, and with 5 gathering speed. The places I gather are Lynch Ranch for sheep blood and meat, around Western Guard Camp for wolf blood, southeast of Uncado Coast and west of Uncado Inner Harbor for lion meat, Pilgrim's Haven for rough stone, and Mancha Forest for logs. Also, sometimes I end up having to gather for lizard blood over near Glish. Rough stone and logs are used for advanced cooking utensils and advanced alchemy tools. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you did, please leave a like, comment on the video, and or subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time.